Miss Minchin is right here. She's been talking about empty nest syndrome and last week, her youngest daughter, Scarlett, left for university following her eldest daughter, Mia, who left home three years ago. Now, it means Louise has a house free of children for the first time in 21 years and you're not really kicking your height, are you? Do you know what? I thought <laughs> in my ignorance three years ago that, you know, you get to this moment and you go, oh my gosh, it's amazing. I don't have to do all the washing up. I don't have to clean all the clothes, tidy the house. And you'd have this huge sense of kind of release and freedom. Yeah. And nobody warned me, none of my friends warned me that actually it was going to be really hard. Much harder. So it completely blew me away. Yeah. Uh, Mia left um, to go to uni three years ago. And I was unprepared, unprepared for the um, silence and sense of loss and sadness. Yeah, it blindsides you, doesn't it? Completely. It really does. I think, and and I've, I've, you know, I do talk about it a bit now, and people, so many people are in touch going, I know exactly how you feel. Well, why didn't you tell me it was going to be like that? Because <laughs> nobody tells you. I could right. have prepared. So I know. It was really, it was really, really took me by surprise, and so. Obviously, I knew that this was going to happen again. Uh, mm. Scarlett went on Saturday. Not that I'm counting the days or anything, no, 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 or no. the texts. No, no, no. <laughs> or the phone calls. <laughs> um, so this time around, I've really tried to get ready for it in a different yeah. way, actually. And it's also, it is that thing, like you said, nobody prepares you for it. And yes, you've got a lovely quiet house. And yes, everything is tidy and all of that. But you've got a brilliant strategy. Brilliant strategy. Send the pictures of the dog. Well, I, yeah, I really respond to that, right? <laughs> no, so I, you know, it's that sort of thing because I'm super proud that they've gone. But I mean, look at my lovely dogs as well as my lovely daughters. But um, <laughs> and, and I'm so delighted that they have, and that's absolutely brilliant. But it's that kind of loss of contact. And I know, for example, particularly with Scarlett, that she loves Ruby, who is the well, the, who the, wouldn't? The, yeah. frankly. Um, and gorgeous. and I've been really naughty this week because when she wasn't replying to my text, and I don't send that many, I promise you. No, no. no. Um, I thought, oh, I just send a picture of the dog, and of course. Of course, I get a response, but you know, it's that sort of letting go, and you prepare. You know, I, you know, I, I sort of woke up on on Sunday morning. I was like, right, this is what I've been waiting for for 21 years. You know, yeah. finally, you know, they're on their way, and that's absolutely brilliant. But um, you know, you don't want to let go of that communication as well. Exactly, and being so much part of their lives, and I don't mean that in an interfering way. Well, no, but just I, knowing that... what they're up to. It, well, not all of it, obviously, yeah, because yeah. they do what they do. But it is hard, Louise, because you you know you've got to let them go. Yeah, you've got to. For them to come back as well, but it's different. It's a different relationship. Isn't um, it? it is a different yeah. relationship, and of course, you know, everybody's children are different, and they're different from each other. And uh, for example, uh, Mia's much more in contact with me, and Scarlett, you know, she just she wants to get on with her life. And I think particularly, actually, because of course, there's lots of um, young people out there, and we've all been through it through COVID, and it was mm. so intense, and we've yes. all had our children at home for a very long time. Yep. Um, and she was permanently in her bedroom studying for her A-levels, like lots of you at home will have had that. So there's been a sort of intensity to the relationship, which perhaps we didn't as well have with our children, because yeah, they'd obviously be going true. to school. And she has been going to school for the last year or so. But yeah, it's a, it's a very strange thing. And I've had so many lovely bits of advice from people, which are one of the lovely, my favorite bits of advice is get another dog. I've already got two dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got <laughs> but that is good advice, actually. And keep busy. And keep busy. busy. But you are keeping busy. You're doing so much. It's fantastic. You're writing, you've got the podcast, you've got everything going on. I guess you don't have time to miss doing BBC Breakfast. And it must be weird uh, being I here. I don't miss the hours. No. I know, I mean, this is Is, is so this strange. weird? Is this weird? Honestly, being I walked in and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I spent so much time sitting in this room in the diff <laughs> on the different coloured sofa. I know. Um, I don't miss the hours. The no. hours are really tough. And, you know, I mean, you know, I loved my job. Of course. And I love the people I work with. Uh, but the, you know, that relentless three, four, and you know this, and anybody who you know does shift work will know, you yeah. know, that three forty in the morning for me and uh, for many, many people is really tough. So. And you did it for a long time. Yeah, I did it for twenty years. That's a long time. I, 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 yeah. And it was, you know, sometimes you know in yourself, and you think, well, you've got all these other things that you want to do, and all yeah. these other things that you want to explore as well. So, yeah, it's it's just been um, great. I feel really lucky because. Um, BBC Breakfast, and, and when I went on that cycling challenge many, many years ago now, um, and re remembered for the first time, I gave up sport when I was about 14 or 15, and remembered, oh my gosh, how much I love sport. Yeah. You know, it was, it changed things so much for me. It was absolutely brilliant. And so, you know, now that I'm doing so much sport, I'm doing lots of you ridiculous are. endurance events, and yeah, so I'm very lucky that I got that You're from You're so job. sporty. I mean, like triathlons, that's proper. I did one last week, which was... Um... Jeez. <laughs> 
just win that. Honestly, if you told me that ten years ago, <laughs> I'd have been Louise. What are you talking about? You're probably fitter now than you were ten years ago. That's oh, the very much thing. so. Yeah. Very much so. I did one last week, which was um, for a charity for Youth Adventure Trust, and it was a hike and a bike and a paddleboard. Wow. And, but I love that, and I love being outside, and that's been super um, important for me and empowering. I think as a woman of kind of my age, mm. to go out and do stuff that I really enjoy is it's really challenging. It's brilliant, and I love this thing you're doing about adventures with super women. Yes. So you're you're focusing on lots of different super women and so, telling their stories. I, that's brilliant. Um, one thing that's also important for me is I just I think you know I think particularly, and I'm probably sort of putting it on, a bit on the edge there, you know, women's, I really like telling women's stories because I think yeah. often sometimes we don't tell our own stories or many amazing women that I've met, you know, are not shouting about what they do. So it's yeah. an opportunity for me to shout about what they're doing. And yeah, there's lots of different, I call them adventures. And again, they are my version of, of fun. Yeah. Um, I cycled across Argentina. Wow. Um, I went free diving under ice and each so chapter true. is dedicated to a different woman and a different... Uh, I mean, really, some really challenging things for me as well. But great and really inspiring. And you just think, well, maybe you won't be able to do that. Yeah. You might be able to do... Yeah, I mean, something hopefully else. there's something, you know, I mean, I, you know, some of the walks, I walked up Snowdon um, for one of the chapters and I thought that was going to be fine because I've been up Snowdon a couple of times before. Yeah, yeah. It was not fine. <laughs> it was not fine at all. <laughs> it got to sort of minus three at the top and I was, nah. at, and I was like... Anyway, so there's. But it's some... good. I think it's good to challenge yourself. And you also said, and, and I know this, of course, when you work somewhere for a long, long time, yes. you become really good friends with people. Of course yeah. you do. People on screen, off screen, crew, yeah. production team, yes. all of that. And I know that you and Bill, Bill Turnbull, were really, really close. And what a legacy that fantastic fella oh, has left us. Him. I mean, amazing. I mean, first amazing. thing, he was uh, an utter, he was charming, he was very funny, he was very kind, he was an absolutely brilliant journalist and, you know, yeah. he made me a better journalist because he would always pick you up. I mean, he and he made me laugh a lot. Yeah. Um, but I think the most um, sort of moving thing for me in some ways um, has been since... Um, he died, is people who've come up to me. For example, I was shopping for the university shop in Ikea the other day, and I could see this man really wanted to talk to me. And he came over and he said, I've got to tell you that I've just um, had um, prostate cancer. It's because of Bill that I got tested. It's wow. because of him that I'm here today. So it's an amazing, incredible, an incredibly generous thing to do because... You know, Bill was an immensely private man, so mm. to talk about that was, I think, really brave. Oh, that's brilliant. I really hope yeah. that helps his, his family and people that loved him. Yeah. I really hope it does, because that's amazing, isn't it? That is yeah, I mean, I think that's a, an incredible legacy, and there'll be people who are watching us here today who will be, you know, their lives can be changed by what he did. It's, it's, it's fantastic. It's the best possible And I just, thing. I just, I looked through, I looked through my phone and I looked at all, the, you know, because you do, don't you? And I've been doing that this week with the girls as well. And every single photo I have of me and him, we are just laughing our heads off. And he had a naughty, wicked sense of humour. <laughs> and you know that's really important. No, it, oh, it? it absolutely Especially is. in this job. It's just nice to know. That. You need to, yeah, you need yeah. to have that. Louise, what a joy. Oh, thank, thank you, so, you much. so much. Come it's back and talk to, to you. us when the book's out. Oh, thank you. I would love we to do that. We want to talk about the podcast. There's so, so much to talk to you about. And it's, it's lovely and kind of strange to be here again. So Imagine it's slightly surreal. <laughs> yes, it must <laughs> be very you. strange. Thank you so much. Great to talk to you. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.